I'm Katie McCormick. I'm the Associate University Librarian for Special Collections here at the J. Murray Atkins Library. We're here today in the uh, Harry and Mary Dalton room, um, the rare book reading room. Our collection consists of about 9,000 rare books spanning American literature in the 18th and 19th century, British literature, local history, uh, as well as religious texts and a smattering in between. Uh, some of our gems include first editions of Uncle Tom's Cabin, as well as first editions of Hawthorne, Hemingway, uh, many of the major American authors. We also have a first edition of uh, Moby Dick that was our 500,000th volume here in the library. Our millionth volume was a first edition of T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland which we were very excited about. Um, and this uh, large collection, a multi-volume set of early British drama uh, spanning the 17th and 18th century. It's one of the more complete sets of contemporary um, drama at the time, comedies, farces, musical dramas. This particular set belonged to Princess Sophia of Mecklenburg, who was the daughter of Queen Charlotte and King George III. Uh, for whom the city of Charlotte and Mecklenburg County are named for. And there are some volumes that have even some of her notes. The earliest book in our collection is a Latin translation of the Sermons of Job from 1471. Um, you can see it's, it was probably rebound in the 19th century, um, but the text block itself, you can see the inscription there. Um, is the original text block. So this would have been uh, created in, in the earliest period of um, printmaking as opposed to hand manuscripts, uh, but you still see the sort of the hand detail with certain of the letters and color accents that occur. Another of our earlier items is a uh, Bible, uh, English uh, Bible from 1591, or 1599, excuse me, um, printed in London. Um, one of the noteworthy things about this particular uh, edition of the Bible, um, in its time and later, it was known as the Breaches Bible. Um, it predates the King James Version of the Bible by just a few years, I believe. Um, and was very popular until the publication of King James. It's called the Breaches Bible because in Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, um, the text states, Then the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed tree leaves together and made themselves breeches, as is an apron. Uh, so instead of the, the leaf image, uh, and the, the change in the t translation of the text for the King James Version. This is the, the first time they see breaches. Another area that our collections are quite rich in uh, is the poetry of Phyllis Wheatley. Um, we have both Phyllis Wheatley's personal library um, in our collection, so her copy of Alexander Pope's poems and some other things. Uh, as well as her own, her own copy of her the first edition of her poems, signed by Phyllis Wheatley. Another strength in our collection is children's literature. Um, some of the earliest examples that we have. This is a horn book. Uh, horn books would have been used um, in primary education, um, particularly in the 17th and early 18th centuries when paper was both expensive uh, and rare. The horn overlay on this has clouded a bit, um, but it is a simple page of uh, letters A to Z, numbers 1 to 0, and then uh, one syllable words. Uh, the lore is there's a hole here. Uh, the child would have worn it around his or her neck. 
um, to be able to read it. And in um, some stories, the horn book was sometimes used as a paddle for unruly children. And I'm not sure that this one was ever used that way. After the horn book, um, the battle door, this one dates circa 1774 again, uh, rebound in a much, at a much later date. Um, this one printed in Philadelphia. Also a simple um, educational tool, A to Z, one to zero, and then matching letters to phrases. With small illustrations uh, for those uh, phrases to be recited back. Beyond rare books, uh, we also focus in manuscript collections, university archives, oral histories, local documents. Our manuscript collections are primarily uh, focused on a regional history basis, so we collect the history of Charlotte, Mecklenburg County, and the greater Charlotte region. Um, one of our areas of strength is civil rights. Um, in those collections, the papers of Dr. Reginald Hawkins, uh, Fred Alexander, Kelly Alexander Sr., uh, Charles McLean, who were involved with the NAACP, uh, as well as Harry Golden, who was the um, editor of the Carolina Israelite. Um, also, uh, T.J. Reddy, who was a student here um, at UNC Charlotte, uh, who was an activist uh, and is now a poet and renowned artist. This is an example. This is a letter uh, that he wrote to his professor uh, his history professor here on campus shortly after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King explaining why he couldn't come to class. My not attending class today was not an indication of my lack of an interest in history. History has shown me how awesome and devastating situations or conditions can be at times. With due respect to someone I admired because of his staunch foothold and understanding of the sphere of human life, I could not bear to sit in class when knowing that an honest appraisal of my heartfelt emotion would not have allowed me to be at all attentive. My absence then is for, to for time to render my personal me memorial dedication to give more time for some reflective thought to a man I did not agree with at all times, in all instances, but to one nonetheless who fought tenaciously but nonviolently and with strong convictions seeking the good brotherhood, justice, and peace. I trust that you understand my involvement. T. James Reddy. I think this is a, a poignant example of a young man's response um, to the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, how emotional it was, um, but also reflects the activities at the time. In Dr. Reginald Hawkins' papers, um, we do have some examples um, Dr. Hawkins was a civil rights activist, um, advocated for the desegregation of UNC Chapels Hill Dental School, was a North Carolina gubernatorial candidate twice in 1968 and 1972, uh, was a student at Johnson C. Smith University um, who organized um, civil rights actions here in Charlotte and across the state. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, sent several um, telegrams to him over the course of time regarding organizing activities on a national level, um, Dr. Haw Hawkins' involvement with coordinating um, activities here in Charlotte uh, with those national events. One of the most poignant telegrams, uh, which we is the original is on display here in Charlotte at the Levine Museum of the New South, um, is a letter to doc or a telegram to Dr. Haw Hawkins dated April 2nd, 1968, um, explaining that Dr. King would not be able to attend um, a scheduled meeting here in Charlotte on April 4th uh, because of the situation in Memphis with the striking sanitation workers. Um, poignant in part uh, because it would be uh, Dr. King would never make it. Uh, he was assassinated uh, the very day that he was to be here in Charlotte. 